everybody, Ken here for the Monday Poker Fixed. We are coming at you this week with a final table down to the top three players in a $200 Double Green Bird Bounty Deep Stack Tournament. That is a mouthful of a name, but it's a $200 tournament with $50 bounties on each player, which definitely makes for some exciting and um, different all-ins. So this is a hand here that I wanted to talk about because you've got, um, you know, three players. Button, small blind, big blind. Button folds, comes around to the small blind who wakes up with quite a monster. I mean, that's a monster in a full raked ring game, but um, even much better with uh, when your head's up against small blind, big blind. <clears throat> Steve elects to just limp in. I really like this play because Brandon had talked about it earlier where if you're going to limp in your bad hands, you also have to limp in your good hands so that the players that you're playing against do not always know exactly what you have. Well, Jin for Steve, which uh, is another favorite uh, saying for myself, uh, he flops Broadway, and unfortunately for Les here, he's got a backdoor flush draw and an open ender. He's going to bet it out. Uh, 40K in the pot, he bets in, you know, a little more than half, 25,000, 24,000. Um, Steve gives it the old ear wiggle. He's thinking about it. What do I do here to keep this fish on? Not that Les is a fish. He's just got a fishy hand. So he elects to call. No reason to raise here. I mean, you've got nothing to worry about at this point. Turn comes out. And now it's a gin card for Les. It's the eight, which gives Les the lesser end of this straight. Steve checks it again. Um, again, no reason to rave here to raise. Let the players continue to bluff into you. Give them a reason to bluff. Although Les does not believe that he is bluffing. See, the benefit of, of limping in with your big hands in shorthanded tournament play is that your player's going to have a difficult time putting you on a range. I mean, maybe Steve's just putting him on a king and he thinks that he's got the much better hand, right? So it looks like um, Les bets out 28,000 this time. Steve is going to just call which I like. Backdoor flush draw here, but neither player has a spade. River does come out for that spade. It's a six of spades, but as I always like to say, and Brandon reminds us, that you never have to worry about a backdoor flush draw in Hold'em. It just never happens. This is in Omaha, folks. People don't back into a, uh, a flush draw here. So Steve's going to just continue to check here and see if Les can just hang himself, which it looks like he's counting on chips, and it's something he's going to do. I mean, they all have pretty relatively um, the same stack sizes here. This is a very even match here for this final table down to the top three players. Steve bets out 50, which is about a third size of the pot, which I think is a nice size bet, but I think Les could have easily just checked this one back from Steve. I mean, he has been, you know, check bet call on every street there is no reason to fire a third bet here all you can do is get re-raised and then you're forced to pick you know and decide if you want to continue i don't think you get a lot of value here it was a big enough pot he could have easily just taken it down there so steve does my absolute pet peeve he just min raises less less gives him the you know shoulder shake head nod and then tells him that's a beautiful hand because uh I believe he could have gotten more. I think uh, the two mistakes here is that Les should have probably given up on the river there. I mean, when you've got the, you know, especially with the flush hitting there and the second nut straight, I mean, you're really third straight. I mean, you've got a lot of cards out there that beat you. King nine, ace king, any nine. Um, certainly could have just checked it back there and tried to have some showdown value. As it turns out, um, he bets it, gets min raised. I think the second mistake there is that uh, Steve possibly could have made it 150 and probably still gotten a call out of him. So, a little bit of value time for both players, uh, a little bit of something to learn for all of us. Remember, guys, as Brandon always tells us, if you're going to limp in your good hands, or sorry, if you're going to limp in your bad hands, you got to limp in your good hands too. Otherwise, your players are going to know exactly what range you're playing. Well, thanks for watching the Monday Poker Fix. Check us out this week for Thursday Night Commentary. And uh, we'll see you then. Thanks, everybody. Bye.